Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of videos and today I wanted to show off another game that I played over the board a few months ago. So this was a game that I played in my local league. Uh, my opponent was a decent player, um, roughly rated I think around the 1550. Uh, he, interestingly enough, his rating online was, was eight, his rating uh, over the board was actually even better in rapid play. So he, this guy played a lot of rapid play tournaments and his rating was about 1600 so very normally very fast time control style player and it was interesting during our particular game although this was a 70 minute plus 10 second game uh, he played his moves particularly quickly which did put me under a lot of pressure later on in the game so in any case the game started with d4 and i played my immediate e5 move as you know i like playing this particular crazy little gambit you know, after the pawn captures, I'm going to play d6 and just go for development. It doesn't look particularly good, and it isn't very good. And you can see here that already lead chess gives it a blunder. But for me, I like playing the lines. I know the lines very well, and I play it a lot online. In any case here, my opponent, I'm assuming, didn't want to go into this particular prep, or maybe he had already prepared some sort of system like the London system. So already he makes a mistake now with the move knight to f3 does hit this pawn twice but it now allows the move e5 and now this knight has to go somewhere and there's not many good squares for it to go to the best move according to the engine is going to uh, f to d2 but already this is like blocking in a bishop and you know i can just immediately take over the center with d5 although moves such as c4 here could be interesting as the knight is still supporting the c pawn in any case here my opponent already played a very odd move knight to g5 um, we, he is now hitting this pawn, but now this allows me to play d5. And you'll notice here I'm already doing quite well. I've got a good control of the center. I've got both of my central pawns right in the center. It looks a bit like a weird sort of reverse French defense, except I'm playing on the black side. And this knight is just a bit offside. Okay, it's defended by this bishop, but at some point in the future I'm going to play the move e7, hitting the knight, and he's going to have to then move his knight away. Uh, now here my opponent again the opening he really just butchered this opening so badly um, for most of this game and uh, well c3 is just awful I mean, it's just not really uh, understanding what's happening in this position c4 would have been really good as this would have attacked uh, at least gone for a pawn break against my big center uh, just to show you that that would have been a, a little bit better and okay, you know, he can then start developing normally and then start maybe uh, breaking down my center. So I think this would have been a much better line for him to go to. But c3 doesn't really challenge uh, my center at all. And I'm just very happy with my position now. Uh, so here I play bishop to e7, hitting the knight. And now the knight comes back to h3. And I pondered for a little bit, for a little while at this position because I was thinking about, well, do I take this knight here or do I not? Obviously, I lose the bishop pair, but I will afflict uh, double pawns on his position. But the downside of it for me is then his white rook will get into this open file, and you know, it's going to be very difficult for me to castle on the king side. And uh, well, you know, I didn't think you know giving up the bishop pair was it really worth it. But then I kind of thought to myself, well, the problem here is this knight is now maybe threatening to come to f4 and just putting a bit of annoying pressure on my d5 pawn. So I now decided here, okay, I'm going to take this off, g takes and h3. I've now got long-term weaknesses that I can go for in the future uh, with these doubled isolated pawns on the h file. Play continue, I put my knight onto f, uh, f6. Now the reason I did this was because you know, I didn't want the queen to start coming to b3 and then have this annoying fork against my pawns. Albeit, in actual fact, I don't think it mattered too much. Um, let me just play uh, a wasted move here. If now, can he do queen to b3? He can, but actually it doesn't really matter so much because now if he takes this here, okay, this is fine. So I just developed my pieces and, well, the, the queen looks a bit silly on the square, really. Uh, it's the only piece developed and I can start uh, causing uh, white some issues. So anyway, let's go back just for a moment. So after this, I put my knight here, maybe a little bit, didn't need to play this move, but I thought this was a nice developing move. I'm getting ready to castle, albeit the engine doesn't seem to particularly like this move too much. Okay, put my he put his bishop onto f4 and I'll put, develop my other knight uh, to d7. 
And again, this was to maybe guard against some ideas of the queen coming here. And maybe I can put my, my knight onto b6 just to guard against this. Now he plays queen to a4. Really just, as I say, some really odd moves for my opponent. Um, I'd now just decided to play c6. I thought I was sure everything up and... You know, maybe I got some ideas of just pushing here with b5 and just making his queen just look a little bit silly. Here he put his uh, pawn onto e3. Now I play knight to h5. My idea was I'm going to swap off his bishop pair for my knight. The downside for me here again, you know, now this actually gets rid of his pawn weakness. But having said that, this isn't particularly now as menacing this position uh, for, uh, for me. I can now just castle short now and I don't have to worry about the rook coming onto this open file. And these pawns are still, they're still a little bit ridiculous having moved forward a little bit. Um, so, you know, if he decides to castle on the short side, it's not so safe for him either. Okay, it castles. His knight comes to uh, d d2 and now I play the, now I play the move c5 uh, again. Engine doesn't like this too much, but I thought I needed to go for my, my pawn break here. Um, I'm interested what it says instead. B5. I mean, I'm not overly sure why it's suggesting this move. I'm just assume it just thinks, okay, just develop a tempi. And uh, well, after something like, I guess, coming here, there were some ideas of knight coming to B6 and maybe at some point coming here. Just to show, show you this line. Um, I'll just show you this engine recommended line here just for the moment. I mean, this looks pretty good, I suppose, for black. And again, maybe I can threaten the, the poor and the knight jumping into the square and just, again, just being a total nuisance. His queen side's totally shut down. I can actually do some stuff on the king side now and uh, I don't have to worry about any nasty counterattacks. So I think this is, this is definitely a good position for black here. Okay, going back. So knight's to d2, c5. Now he put his queen onto b5, an unusual move, but I guess now... He's threatening just to take this, uh, this, oops, sorry, to maybe take this pawn or at least tack this pawn. I put my queen onto c7, now guarding this pawn, and he now took here on d5. And, you know, as I say, my opponent, he was playing very quickly. Uh, I think he'd only used maybe five minutes up at this point, and I'd used about 20 minutes. So there was a bit of a, I guess, I was slightly exhausted because I'm having to do a lot of the thinking on my move uh, up until this point, and, uh, you know, after a while, normally during a chess game, I like to sort of wander around maybe a couple times during my game just to kind of get a little, I guess, like a, a walking break uh, to kind of like rejuvenate and think about the positions. So uh, here, without thinking too much, I decided to play the move uh, just a6. And then I said, OK, I'm going to go to the toilets, uh, do what I need to do and then come back the board with a kind of fresh fresh state of mind i like doing this during games i think it's a really good thing to do uh, for any players who do do uh, over the board chess because uh, as i say it kind of gets you kind of okay relax a little bit you know, it might have a good position or a bad position but you know you can kind of come back and get a fresh perspective on the board now after a6 he comes back to b3 and now he's threatening just to take this pawn now what i should have done I think in this position is maybe taken this pawn with the queen, but I decided to take this with c5. As you know, and I came back to the board. He played b knight to queen to b3, and I just immediately played knight to takes on c5. Uh, the problem with this is that now gambits this pawn on d5, queen takes on d5, and I was like, oh, I'm just down a pawn in this position. A very, very odd position. And OK, you can see here the engine thinks it's a mistake and we'll, we'll kind of look into the reason why it was a mistake. But, you know, just imagine this, you know, you've had to think and then he, I thought like I had a very good position for most of the game. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, I'm being rewarded by being just down a pawn in this position. So this uh, this kind of threw me a little bit and I started going to get... I was starting to get a little bit kind of uh, rash in some of my decision making for the next sort of 10 moves or so. Because again, I think this kind of flustered me a little bit, you know, and to top it off as well, other things that were happening in the position, I was, uh, you know, I was down time wise. I think he had like a 20 minute time advantage on me. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking, oh, you know, this isn't this isn't looking as good as I as I thought it looked. So. Okay, I put my rook onto 
uh, a to d8, and I think this is a great move because I'm now threatening just to come and jump into the square. His queen now came to e4, maybe guarding against this idea of me jumping in here. And, well, uh, again, didn't really find the best continuation here. I thought, well, his queen doesn't look particularly great on this square, so now I played the move g6. Perhaps not the best move. Again, it's now opening up some potential weaknesses on the dark squares. I thought this would be fine because he didn't have a dark square bishop, uh, but it's now actually creating a few issues for my king's safety, as we'll see in a moment. A much stronger move, and it's a really nice move, actually. See if you can find the move to really get a good advantage here. So the move was queen to a5, a fantastic move. This has a simple idea of now threatening to jump the knight into d3 with check, and then pick up this queen. A nice discovered attack. If this happened, he would have had to play the move uh, queen to f4, which at least gets out of that. Now I can play the move uh, a4. And, uh, well, I'm now looking to infiltrate into white's position. His king's not castled, so this is just looking really, really bad. Maybe queen to g4 could be played, queen to c2. And, well, it just starts to get a little bit ropey. In fact, white would be best now. I mean, this is, again, this is an engine line here to try and look for swaps because he uh, needs to defend this position. But after moves it to this, I get the pawn back now. Uh, rook to c1 and then taken now up two pawns and I've still got a nice position I could even look to jump a knight in here and have to take you know get a rook in here and it's just looking really really bad for uh, white's uh, white's position now uh, his pieces are very passive and I've basically got all the play get my other rook onto d8 and just do all kinds of difficulty uh, difficult moves for white to deal with okay so g6 was play going back to this position now he put his queen onto g4, and uh, well, again, I, w I wanted to move this queen away because you know I was thinking, okay, I can jump this this knight here. Maybe I can force this queen back to d1. So here I played the move uh, f5 without really calculating this line properly. Um, now what I thought was going to happen here is his queen was going to go back to e2. I knew if it came back to here, I would be fine because I was thinking, well, he's undeveloped his queen now, and that's just that's just no good. And uh, but if he came back to e2, I was thinking, great, I could jump him with a check, kick the king around, and just have a very nice position. What I didn't anticipate was this queen, this bishop to c4 move. Again, it's a blunder. Uh, we'll see why it's a blunder in a sec. But I was like, oh, my my king's now under attack. I've got to move this. And annoyingly, now he can just put his queen onto e2, which is what he does in the game. And uh, he doesn't have to worry about trapping in his bishop on here. So here I played the move b5. And, well, my opponent now counterattacked with b4. Some very confusing, very uh, tricky moves my opponent was playing. And I just, I just didn't see these moves potentially happening. But I perhaps did not find the best way to really deal with them. Uh, so after he played this move, I've now played my own blunder. I put my knights now onto d3 with check. Just not a great move. Uh, instead, knight to a4 was just fantastic. Jump into the square, hit this queen. If, let's say, he plays some sort of passive move like uh, rook to c1, um, I believe a, well, I believe, but I mean, I just pick up, I pick up a bishop here in this situation. So he would have to maybe move his... I don't know, maybe move his bishop back to here, in which case I pick up a pawn, even after something like this, uh, I can actually take here, and I think this takes, is that any good? I'm not too sure, one sec, let me just, let me just analyse this, yeah, so rook to c1, okay, and then, okay, I could just defend here, and then this is just really fine, in fact, the, again, the engine is now saying just, just take the, the, the knight now, because your queen can't go anywhere, uh, let's say it goes back to f1. Well, in that case, oh my goodness, it all starts to fall apart. This position for black. So this would uh, white. Sorry. So this would have been an interesting continuation had I calculated this properly. So knight to a4 would have just been a really good move just to win the game on the spot. Instead, I put my knight onto d3. Bishop took. I can still get a good advantage here, but I've got to find the best move. Uh, now the best move, as you probably just saw there, with the engine was just taking here with the queen, and this is really good. You know, if he now just castles, 
I pick up this bishop and, well, I've got just a very good edge. If he takes back, takes back. This knight is not going really anywhere. I'm going to pick up this pawn and I've got a very good active position here. But instead, uh, what happens in the game is, uh, well, I took back with the rook thinking that this was a nice move because, well, I was thinking, well, oh, great, I've got a nice rook here, I'm going to get my other rook double up on the d file. The problem here is after castles and queen takes here, he now gets his knight round to b3, and I started to sort of panic a little bit. I was like, oh, okay, I've equalised the material, but this is a bit of a problem move now. And after this, it starts to get a little bit dodgy. Now, my, my, pawn, my king's not that super safe here, and maybe he can start coming on the counter-attack with his own pieces. So he's suddenly starting to get quite active in this position, and I've not really got a clear edge in this position, uh, if I'm being honest with you. I've got a little bit of space, but it's kind of all a bit on a very, I would say, very shaky, shaky position for me. Okay, picked up another pawn. Now rook a to c1, put my queen back to e5. The engine now is just saying totally even in this position, which is really interesting. So now he jumps his knight into d4. Weird that it felt that this was a mistake, but um, there was there were some lines here that I could play here to, to get myself into the win. Uh, I now put my bishop onto c3, now hitting the knight. Uh, he now took this off the board, I took back. If he doesn't take here, that in actual fact, this uh, this knight can't really go anywhere. If he tries to, um, just as an example, well, let's say it just goes back here. I think I win on the spot with this move and hitting the queen. And there's all kinds of issues. If he goes back here, I take, and then there's this really nasty discovery attack. And if, let's say, he comes over, I don't know, let's say he starts hitting this queen, I believe I can just do this, and actually this knight has not really got any way it can go to without being captured. Um, he, yeah, this is this is interesting. So I thought this is funny that now he had to kind of give this up. I took back. I'm now up materially, but it's still not super clear. I put my rook over here. Now a4 was played, and uh, you know as I say, this is this has been a bit of a crazy last. I don't know, we're on move 29, but let's just go back just for a moment, because we've had essentially this huge tactical melee, very crazy, weird position for about 14 moves, and as you can imagine, I've probably used quite a bit of time up until this point, I think I was down to my last 20 minutes, and annoyingly, my opponent still got, he's already used 10 minutes up until this point, uh, so you still got about an hour to think, and I've got maybe 25 minutes maybe now left to think. So I shouldn't have really panicked so much because you know 25 minutes is a lot of time, and if my opponent's not finding the best moves, then quite clearly um, you know I can try and find some good moves here. So okay, a4 is now played, and now I play the move king to h6. I was a bit for whatever reason I was a bit worried with where my king was on this particular square. I thought there was some nasty looking, I guess, like weird check lines. Like, for example, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I was really thinking here, to be honest with you. Firstly, I was worried about something like this from happening. But, you know, this is fine, obviously. This is, this is just winning. So I can't remember why I played the move king to h6, thinking it was safer. In actual fact, it's not really that much safer on this square and it gets me into a bit of bother later in the game. Okay, so there's a swap of pawns. Now he puts his rook onto a, a1. Not really too sure what he was thinking with that move. I, I just thought he could just capture this and be absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, and this is, this again, this is very complicated, this position. I'd have to come back here and then everything holds together just about. It's still a bit of a crazy position. I push my pawn forward, now to b4, and now he puts his king onto g2, a bit of an unusual move. Perhaps better was to take here. I, I think the reason why I decided to give up that pawn was there were some ideas that I had with swapping off the rooks like this. 
and then maybe trying to go for a few more exchanges and I thought this looked pretty good for black. I whack on the engine though, unfortunately it just says complete draw after queen to b8. Uh, the idea being there's I think some perpetual check ideas but it starts to look really really difficult and very scary because you know this, this is a queen and knight working together. These are two very good attacking pieces uh, and can create some issues for me. Even though I've got a rook and a queen, the problem with these two pieces is that they work on the same squares, whereas the knight and the queen work on slightly different squares. So it start, it just gets very, very messy for me, and my, my king, as I say, is not in the best square it could possibly be. Okay, in any case, let's go back just to what actually happened in the game. So king to g2 was played. I now put my queen onto c5. I'm assuming, again, uh, this is my only assumption, he played this move to stop uh, these forced trades from happening, which might have been bad for him, but in any case. Right, so now rook to a6 is now played. And here I've played what I thought was a big blunder, queen to a4, and I realised, oh no, this is a bad move. The reason why I thought it was a bad move is, on the next move, well, he actually blundered here, I thought he could now play the move, knight to a5 check. Oh dear. Now, where does this king go to? Well, there's one move that I believe just loses, and the other move that is survives. If I go to here, I believe it's checkmate in two, but I'm not entirely convinced. Let me just double check. It's not checkmate in two. I think one of them does win. <laughs> is it this one that loses? Oh, interesting. So this move actually survives. The other move gives a slight edge for white. If I go here, now, queen to a1, I mean, how someone would ever define that move is beyond me. But the idea is you now threaten to come here. But what I was worried about after I played this was him throwing this check. And I have to go to this square. And then I was maybe worried about something like this, maybe just threatening one move, but I can actually, you can actually take here. Can I not just do something? Oh, I see. Ah, gets out of it. Oh, so interesting. So there was, there was some really, it just looked really dodgy, but uh, it turns out, as I said, that was, I was seeing ghosts because apparently this is fine. And maybe my opponent also saw that as fine, but he decided to play this instead. And I was, had a big kind of, whoo, sigh of relief when I saw this as now I'm actually just definitely winning this game. Um, and it was good for me personally, because I just thought when I played, it was like, oh God, I'm playing this game awfully. I've really just given him so many chances this particular game that I really shouldn't have given him. Rook to c1 just wins on the spot. The reason why it's so good is I can now put my queen onto, well, I'm threatening this, and there's actually nothing he can really do about it. He puts his queen back to e2, but now I found this very nice, uh, calculated that very nice line here. Uh, after he takes and knight takes, you would think I would now need to move the rook because it is under attack. I found this very nice move, b3. Just a very nice tactic. The reason being, the reason why black is, uh, white is totally lost here is now after he takes here, I calculated b2. And <laughs> this is great. He's got no time to go to b4, as I'm going to just take this knight off the board. And well, if he moves the knight, then I mean, that's a terrible square. Let's go over here, let's say, I don't know, over here. I just promote to a queen, and there's nothing he can do about it. I'll show you the last few moves. There's not really a huge amount more to see. b2, knight comes back to e2. Um, other moves, by the way, I mean, just in case you're wondering, if he just decides to do this... Uh, I think I can now just put my rook here, get out of this, and I'm still threatening to push this pawn if he comes over here. Um, God, so long ago since I saw this game, so I'm trying to remember what I should have played. Uh, is that the right move? Let's see. Rook to e1. Ah, okay, was this the move that I was meant to play? Let's see, he comes here. Ah, okay, right, yeah. This was the line I was looking at, yeah. So I remember... Now, if he takes, then this is just mates in three moves, okay? So, interesting stuff if he... But, obviously, my opponent couldn't resist a free rook here uh, after this move. So, now I played this. His knight came back to e2. Promote to a queen. 
rook to d4, and I put my other rook onto c2, now threatening just to capture this rook, this knight, his knight moved, but it didn't matter as I'm now starting to creep into the position, I'm ready just to take here on f2, well he tried to escape, but it didn't matter as I was able to checkmate him in two moves. So a bit of a crazy game just because it was crazy because you know I, I thought that I had everything under control I had a very nice position but just through miscalculation getting a little bit flustered over the board and kind of playing I guess this weird sort of bathroom gambit um, you know I felt the position kind of slip out of my hands but thankfully I mean this was the key moment back uh, over here with this rook and then this very nice kind of calculation after this move to then win the game which was nice so I was very happy to find that at the very least and that gave me you know some nice confidence you know because I'm doing sort of other sort of calculation stuff and puzzles and whatnot um, when you when you find these sort of things on the board you kind of go okay that that sort of training is paying off a little bit so there we go bit of a mad game thank you for watching thanks for getting all the way here if you did manage to get here uh, in any case, um, I'm going to try and upload a few more of my uh, games that I played not too long ago because um, just before they kind of fall out of my head, like this one, like I can barely remember some of my thoughts that I had, uh, but I'll try and get those up in the next few days. In any case, thank you for watching. Take care.